Hey friends, been a little bit, huh? What do you say today we start putting this uh, 4.3 liter V6 together? Or at least get it ready to put together, huh? Follow on, let's get going on this project. All right, friends. So in and amongst all of my other projects, right over there is the block of a 4.3 liter V6. I started on that thing, it's been over a year. I apologize to all my viewers because uh, that one kind of got put on the back burner while I dealt with some other projects. Uh, but I want to put this one together to go put in my 64 uh, Willys uh, CJ5 Jeep. And I've got it torn down. I've done a little bit of prep work in the background. But now we're to the point to where and I want to put it together on the cheap. I don't want to spend any more money than I have to on it. I've already had to put a few bucks into some things. We'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but let's dig in. I got things set up on the workbench. Let's dig in to the next couple of things we need to do to get this project rocking and rolling. Come on, let's check it out. All right, so we've got the block torn down. I'll put a little link up here so you can go watch that video where we tore it down, we labeled everything, put it, bo boxed it all up and everything. Now we're to the point to where we need to start cleaning up parts, prepping them so that we can assemble this thing. Hopefully assembly like in the next video. Today I have two objectives. One, we're going to polish this crank and get it ready for the bearings. And two, we're gonna take that block, we're gonna go do the old dingle ball hone on that thing and get it ready for pistons. Uh, there's a couple of things here that kind of set me back. Um, one is other projects, right? Life happens, there's a whole bunch of videos I did in the meantime, um, got a new job, all kinds of stuff happens, right? But uh, there were some hangups with this, with this uh, project. Let me show you one of them here right now. So, so as I was, cleaning parts up to start assembly, I was just gonna reuse the old pistons. Again, I'm, I'm doing this on the cheap. I'm not taking this thing to the machine shop. I'm not having the block board. I'm not having it line board, line honed, anything like that, right? I'm just gonna clean it up, put some new bearings in it, uh, bearings and rings, and I wanna send it, right? Put it in the old Jeep. The thing's not gonna be a race motor, all right? It's, it's, this is something we're doing in the garage. It's gonna go in the old rig, and it might, might see 4,000 RPM, right? Um, but I do want to do it as right as I can for the for the budget. Now here was our first hang up I ran into. Um, hopefully this thing will focus. I'll try to get it to focus up close for you without a shadow. But you can see that crack right there, right? And you can see it's a friend right here, the matching crack on the other side. That's on uh, one of these, one of the stock pistons that came out of the block. I noticed as I was cleaning them up that it had a crack. Uh, so I almost, I almost bought one piston and uh, hung it on that rod and sent it in. But uh, then I realized six pistons were like 86 bucks or something. Uh, 90 bucks shipped, I think is what it came out with. So that's what I ended up doing. I just, I got six new pistons. Uh, I took them to the, down to the machine shop and had them pressed because I don't have the, uh, the jig to press these things on. Maybe I ought to get one, but it's pretty simple, right? It was fairly inexpensive for to have my new pistons. Hung on my rods, everything checked out. Uh, they, they're happy, the rods were good. They didn't need to be resized or anything. Um, yeah, so there you go. Standard pistons, stock, thrown on the stock rods. Um, again, 90 bucks worth, right? That's, that's how this is gonna come together. This next step we gotta do is we gotta get this crank ready for the bearings. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna polish this thing. By polishing it, it shouldn't be too tricky, right? There's ways to overthink this, and honestly, you can take it to the machine shop and they can put it in their uh, lathe polish machine deal and hit each one of the journals and, and clean it up real nice. This crank looks really good, actually. Uh, there's no big gouges, no scratches, nothing needs resized. Again, trying to do it on the cheap, so I'm just gonna do some old school, hot rodding, uh, you know, mechanic type stuff, polish the journals on this bad boy, and then get it ready to rock and roll. Okay, so first, it, it's a different story if your crank's been gouged, has a big scratch in it, or torn up or anything. If that's the case and you can't polish that out, you probably got to send it off, have that thing resized, get a new crank, something. This one, we're pretty lucky. This journal might be the worst, and if I drag my fingernail across it, I can just barely feel that. I'm not even worried about it. We're just going to clean it up. I'm going to polish it. All of the grooves, are, are you know, any grooves, the little, the line is even all the way around and it, and it goes like this. So I'm not, I'm not really worried about it. That's gonna be fine with the new bearing on there. Uh, but I'll show you my technique here. First thing, gotta find a way to secure the crank. Uh, so I whip these bad boys up. Now look, I am many things, but a woodworker is not one of them. So just, right, you can take that for what it's worth. Uh, but I whipped these guys up out of some board I had laying around. 
I'm gonna pop these guys in here. We're gonna throw the crank, set it up on that, and then uh, we're gonna get busy polishing this thing. In order to polish this dude, we're gonna need just a couple materials, right? First, we're gonna need some kind of lubricant. I buy this stuff by the gallon, literally. Uh, I've got some sandpaper, which I'll walk through. I think I've got six, let me see, 400, 600, 1,000, and 1,500. We may not get to that 1,500, uh, we'll see. And then I got my, my piece of mule tape. You can use a leather shoestring. You can use the backside of a V-belt, lots of different things to do the actual polishing. Let's start with some 600 grit, and here's how we're gonna do this. Um, we can start here in the back. We'll start with this rear main journal here. The trick is gonna be, okay, you want, we want enough paper to be able to kind of go around at least one, um, one lap around that journal. And we just wanna tear it off to be about the size of the journal. So we'll come in about like that. Let's go with that and see if we can make a square cut of that. There we go. We got one nice strip of 600 grit and it goes right around that rear journal real nice. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is get in here with my, my lubricant. Today we're using WD-40. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of lubricant on there and I'm gonna go ahead and get the paper wet too. Lubed up. We're gonna come around, make sure it makes a full lap on there. And man, I tell you what, you get on the internet, you wanna start reading about this, there's a lot of purists and diehards that'll tell you that you can't, you can't take care of a crank this way. And there's a lot of old school guys that'll tell you to get some emery cloth and just go to town. But I think emery cloth is there. I think we're somewhere in the middle there, right? Emery cloth is a little aggressive. Um, and you can do this at home and get it done correctly. So we're going to wrap that around here. Here's the next trick. I like using this stuff because it's a little bit thicker. You want to wrap it one and a half times around, okay? So we need to go around and we need to come around again so that we can, we make a wrap around it, a lap around it, okay? All right, and now that we have that like that, the trick now is to make sure that it gets traction on the back of that paper and we're just gonna go for it. Try to get it without, oh, come on, the paper's not spinning. I'm not gonna sit here and make you guys watch me go through the pain of getting this to work. Give me a second, I'll bring you back when I got it rocking and rolling. Okay, with a little bit of trial and error, I figured it out. This. This sandpaper just is too, um, it's just too slick on the back and nothing really wants to grab it. Uh, so this is what I ended up doing, just just getting my piece twice as long, folding it in half. And then wrap around the journal. And putting my uh, string around it and it had plenty of traction to grab onto it. So now I should be able to rip through these pretty quick. There we go, lay on there flat. There we go. That's it. I don't really want to take any material off, I just want to clean it up. Yeah. Hey, to be honest, I'm gonna leave this at 600. I'm not even gonna go over it again with anything else. This is looking too good, so. All right, let's keep this up. Come check this out, man. I uh, ran over it to each of the journals uh, to include the back one there. You can just barely, that looks bad, but you can just barely tell there's a groove there, so I'm okay with that. These are just 600 grit, each one of them, 600 grit. Um, you saw me hit them, you know, maybe 20, 30 seconds each. And uh, that's it, man. WD-40, 600 grit sandpaper. I've got enough sandpaper for a lifetime now. Uh, and look, I i don't like to be a good enough kind of guy, but uh, this is good enough. But man, it's just nice, a nice, smooth, slick polish. It's good. I'm sure there's some metallurgist out there, machinists that'll tell me the, uh, or whatever slickness that needs to be, but it is what it is. I'm happy with that. Now, uh, I'm gonna WD-40 this thing up so none of our hard work gets rusted on. WD-40 it up and I'm gonna put that in a plastic bag and set that aside. And then the next thing we gotta do is we gotta drag that block over here, break out the old dingle ball hone and go to town on that thing. Uh, the next thing we gotta do is work on this block right here and I'm gonna just do the old dingle ball hone on it. Check out these cylinders though. Let me get you up there close so you can see what we're looking at. Uh, and you can tell that, that you, you can get away with this on this engine, all right? Now, if I get my light in there and see, 
Ah, the light makes it look worse than it is on camera. But the cylinders look pretty good. You can still see some of the original crosshatch in there. And there's no appreciable ridge here, right? There's no ridge on it. This thing wasn't uh, hammered on or worn out or anything. Now, the other thing to, to discuss on this is that this is a fuel injection engine. It's a TBI engine. Your fuel injection engines are, aren't going to wear the cylinder walls out as much as a carburetor engine because a carburetor, you know, it's, it's up to your right foot how much gas you're slugging down in that thing before you crank it and washing the cylinder walls. Where a fuel injection engine, it's not going to do that to it, right? It's going to give it just enough fuel to get running. So uh, that's why I like rebuilding these. You can get away with it a lot cheaper. Uh, the cylinder is usually in better condition. Um, I've already checked these things out. I went through and measured and they uh, checked fine for bore. Uh, bore and, and roundness as well as taper in the bore. They're, it's all good. This block's in good shape. So what we're going to go along here next to and do is grab the old uh, dingle ball hone. This is the uh, 320 get grit flex hone. I'm going to lube it up with uh, some WD-40. I have some automatic transmission fluid we're also going to use. We're going to wipe this thing down, wipe the cylinder walls with that, and then we're going to go ahead and hit these cylinders with the dingle ball hone. All right, when it comes to doing this hone, I'm not going to tell you that I'm the expert, right? I've just done this a few times. It seems to work. Now, if you do a little research, you'll find uh, lots of varying opinions on how to make this happen. The end goal of this is to get in the cylinders, break the glaze, you know, this hundred and whatever, 90,000 miles of wear that it had on it, give it a fresh new cylinder wall for our fresh new rings to uh, seat into, to seal against the seat into, okay? Uh, the directions of this thing will tell you what kind of uh, oil to use, um, you know, have it rotating upon entry, removal, and removal. And the recommended RPM range for the flex zone is 500 to 800 RPM. Uh, I did some research and all I could figure out is that the old DeWalt 20 volt on setting number two spins at 1600 RPM. So we're gonna do this on step number one. We'll leave our first gear and give it a shot that way. Okay, so I'm gonna, lubrication's key on this. We don't wanna go ruin our cylinder walls or our flex phone in the uh, process of getting this done. So I'm just going to put a little bit of automatic transmission fluid on a shop towel, run it in and out of our cylinder here and get that lubricated. I'll tell you what, you don't want to wear your church clothes out here doing this job either because you'll, uh, you'll be wearing all this oil before this is over with. Because when we go up and down on the cylinder and it comes out, it's just slinging it everywhere. So that's why I got my famous sweatshirt on. All right. And we're going to lubricate the, the flex on itself. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and give it one more good wipe down in the cylinder with some automatic transmission fluid. I'm going to be putting some floor dry out after this. All right. Got all three of them nice and lubricated. And I'm doing this before I wash the block uh, for the you know, final time. Obviously, this is going to make a big mess. So we're going to we're going to get a few. You know, we're going to knock out these cylinders, and then after this, it's going to get its final scrub down, gasket surfaces, final clean, everything like that. The engine's got to be clean enough to eat off when it's time to assemble it. But for now, let's go ahead and knock this thing out. My plan is get it spinning, plunge it in, and give it strokes up and down. This thing here says. Uh, Honing time should be approximately 20 to 45 seconds per second. I'm thinking about 20 to 30 seconds, right? That ought to do it. Uh, and again, the end goal here is to just get a nice 45 degree cross hatch. So you'll see me moving it up and down the plunge to get it in there. All right, without any further ado, let's let it rip. seconds if my old internal clock was right. Let's wipe this out and I'll grab the camera and you guys can come over here and you can check out what this cylinder looks like. Come here, check it out. Here's what it came out like. Okay, there you go. You can see a nice cross hatch all the way up and down the cylinder wall. You know, compare that to, well, it's all dirty because I've been putting stuff in there, but compare it to the, uh, what it looked like before. Looks pretty good. If anything, 
I don't quite have 45 degree on my cross hatch, so I need to go ahead and be a little faster on my on my up and down movement of it. So, all right, well, one down, five cylinders to go. Let's get this done. What do you guys think of that process? You guys are gonna have to let me know and tell me whether or not you've heard that process works very well or not, or you know, if I just ruined an engine or what. You guys tell me your opinions, your thoughts, what you've heard about it. Uh, I'm curious what other people think about this. There's always people in the camp of, hey, always do it right. And you're right, you can't go wrong, take it to a machine shop, have it all done, oversized pistons. But uh, this also gets done pretty cheap. And easy and seems to work well too so there you go there's the cross hatch i think 35 30 to 45 degrees for a cross hatch or maybe that's your teardrop heading for entering a holding pattern i don't know i can't remember anyway these cylinders are good man that's it all right well thanks for bearing with me today in review we cleaned up and polished the crankshaft and we did a quick and dirty a dingle ball home job on the cylinders and have them ready for the pistons I still have a full day of cleaning ahead of me. I'm not gonna bore you guys with that, but this thing's gotta go out there with some hot soapy water and I kinda need a nice day to do that. And it's gotta get scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed with some Dawn dish soap and water and just some elbow grease. And I've gotta run a brush through all my lifter bars and just clean everything up so much that you can eat off of it. I need to make sure all my gasket surfaces are nice and smooth and clean. Um, I need to clean up the camshaft and the uh, main caps uh, pistons and rods are ready to go, but then we'll be ready to start the assembly phase. We'll hang our rings on the pistons and put this thing in. So, spoiler alert, I plan on just using plastic gauge to check my bearing measurements and make sure they're, they're, they're close enough. That's what plastic gauge does for you. It gives you the close enough measurement. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for this thing. I sure appreciate you guys uh, being patient and waiting around to see more on this V6 build. I know a lot of you guys have messaged me and left comments saying, hey man, when's this going to get done? Well, it's happening. Hopefully we can have that Jeep going with us in it by the end of the summer. Uh, well, by hunting season anyway. So we'll see how it goes. Thank you guys for following along. Thanks for helping build this community. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Check out my social media too, Bad Ombre Garage on Facebook and Instagram. And you can email me at badombregarage at gmail.com. All right, thanks and take care.